Hello? Hello? How are you? Echo. I can hear the echo. Echo, echo. <laughs> you can really tell the weather is nice. Yeah. Yeah, it's hard. It's hard when you get out there in that sunshine. Is it? Turn your focus, right? Grandma, you gotta say hi to me. You know it. Yeah. So today is another day, huh? The Lord is made, huh? Anybody get sunburn yesterday? No? All right. Yeah, it's hard when you're indoors, huh? <laughs> Margaret, you get your phone straightened around? That's what I'm saying. I'm going to have to show you the mail that you sent me that you didn't know about. <laughs> but you know how technology is. Subject to fail. <laughs> right. So let, I guess we get started with the announcements. You know, today's Thursday, right? Yeah. And, and then Sunday at uh, 11 o'clock. Uh, closed closet. With uh, Sister Tina's got two days. Yeah. And uh, men's fellowship with Brother Tad here in this building, uh, first Saturday of the month at noon. Uh, April's got uh, Bible study at 8 o'clock on Fridays. And the potluck. Don't forget to sign up. We need about 20 fried chickens. <laughs> whatever, whatever. Just keep Margaret away from it. She got the last piece and wouldn't even offer me a, a, a half of it, you know, any of it. She'd give me a piece of gristle. <laughs> Says, uh, eat this, huh? So, I guess uh, we'll uh, just go to the Lord before the Lord and ask him to bless this night, huh, or this evening. You ready, Diane? All right, I guess uh, let's everybody stand. Let's pray. Just ask you to clear your minds. Put your mind on uh, the Lord right now. and We'll ask him to bless the day. Eh? Dear Father, we just come to you, Father, thanking you for who you are. Thanking you for your love that you showed us and are showing us, Lord, as we go through this day, Father. We thank you for the leadership you've showed us, Father, through Pastor Mark and Sister Jackie. Lord, we just want to thank you for our church home and all the people that are in it. Lord, we just want to ask you, to Father, to be with us tonight, Father. Let minds be renewed and hearts, Father, be lifted up to you. And we're going to give you praise and glory in all these things, Father, because we know that you are worthy that the blood of your son has made a way, made a way for us, Father, that we come to know you in a greater way, Father. We just ask you to touch hearts. Lord, if there's a need, Father, we know that you know it. We ask you to bless right now, Father. Give grace and mercy to all those that need it. And we're going to give you glory and honor in all these things. And all God's people said, amen.
many of you got that? <laughs>
up. How about you? Amen. 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 I was so blessed last Thursday. You know, we were back in the prayer room, and we were talking about how we need the joy. Because the joy of the Lord is our strength. The cares of the world really, really are just like weighing on people. And how we need that joy and that that times of refreshing come from the presence of the Lord. And then we come out and pastor. That's what he ministers to by the spirit of the living God. And I could not help but get excited. That's why I was so excited. Because God obviously heard our prayers. And we come out because we do need those times of refreshing. So, you know, I just believe that that's what's going to happen on these services. We're going to be strengthened and refreshed in his presence. But just like Pastor taught, we have to yield to the Holy Ghost. When he's moving, man, we got to really shake off the things of the world and what's going on around us and just yield to the Holy Ghost so that we can be rained on. Amen. Amen. Because I want the raid. <laughs>
everybody. Put your hands together. Everybody. Everybody. Open up your mouth and worship God for a minute. Come on, everybody. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, just a little bit more. Come on. Somebody thank him just for a minute. Woo! Jesus. 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 mighty God. Thank you, Jesus. <clears throat> Thank you, Lord. Somebody keep praising him for a minute. Put your hands together. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. <clears throat> Thank you, mighty God. Thank you, mighty God. <clears throat> Woo! Thank you, Lord. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. <clears throat> Woo! Mighty God, mighty God. Mighty God, mighty God, mighty God. <clears throat> great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. <clears throat> Woo, mighty God. <clears throat> mighty God, mighty God. <clears throat> Thank you, Jesus. 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 Thank you, mighty God. Thank you, mighty God. Thank you, mighty God. Praise your mighty name. Praise your mighty name. Praise your mighty name. Thank you, mighty God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. <clears throat> Thank you, mighty God. Thank you, mighty God. <clears throat> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. <clears throat> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, mighty God. Thank you, mighty God. Thank you, mighty God. Thank you, mighty God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, mighty God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, mighty God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, mighty God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, mighty God. <clears throat> Woo! Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. 
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Ooh, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus. <clears throat> Mighty God. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, mighty God. <coughs> Thank you, Father. <coughs> Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Mighty God, mighty God, thank you, Father God. Thank you, mighty God, for your peace, Father God, that passes all understanding. Thank you for it, Father God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. <coughs> thank you, mighty God. Thank you, mighty God. Yes, and my spirit, I keep seeing that garment that was talked about that Jesus wore at the very hem of his garment of that oil being coming out of that hem and that oil just dripping out. And I, I don't know if that's a representation of where we're at right now, but there's something about the oil coming off of our garments. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Mighty God. Thank you, Jesus. Mighty God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord God. Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Jesus. Thank you for the oil, God. Hallelujah. Oh, my. Hallelujah. And I can feel that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Whew. Mighty God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I feel that in my hands. <clears throat> hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, my, Thank my you, God. mighty God. Mm, hallelujah. Mm. Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus. Okay, take a couple minutes, you guys, and pray for those uh, soldiers' families. <clears throat> you know what I'm talking about? 
five soldiers got killed by a... No, four. No, five. No I just see it, yep. <clears throat> by a terrorist, he shot, killed them. In Tennessee. So pray for their families real quick. Just in Tennessee, bro. Mighty God. <coughs> Mighty God. <coughs> Everybody come right on this side. <coughs> Mighty God. Mighty God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Mighty God. I want everybody in the room, just for a moment, just stand up, lift your hands up. I want you to just, just start giving God praise and honor just for a moment. Everybody in the room, just give him praise and honor just for a second. Then we'll go into prayer. Just, go, just for a second, just give him praise and honor. Go ahead. Open up your voices and just give him praise and honor. <clears throat> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, mighty God. Thank you, Father. <coughs> Excuse me. Thank you, mighty God. Thank you, mighty God. Thank you, Father God. We want to honor you tonight, Father God, in your presence, Lord, Father God. We just want to stand here and just lift our hands up to you, Lord, Father God. Mighty Lord. <clears throat> Whew. Jesus. Roger, your wife, Cheryl, slip your hands up for a minute. I, I was in my room today praying, and God kept pour, putting you in my spirit. And he kept saying to me, I, I won't put more on you than you can handle. But God told me to tell you this. He wants you to go into intercession for your family. I mean deep intercession, all by yourself, nobody around. Get a room, pick a room, wherever you want to pray, and it, groan, intercede for them. Write it down, what you're interceding for, and you're going to see the hand of God move. Write each and every one of them down. <coughs> All right, thank you. You can have a seat. I'm going to, I want to throw something out to you tonight, and I want you to just think about this for a moment. And what I'm going to say to you is there's two different thoughts on this. And I've not decided which thought I run with. <clears throat> but I want you to just think about this. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let your mind think about this for a second. God's in heaven. Now picture that thought for a minute. God. <clears throat> The supreme being. He's in heaven. The Bible says there's angels that cry before him and they bow before him and they cry, Holy, holy art thou, Lord. And that's what they do. <clears throat> you got that picture? <clears throat> you got it in your mind? God's in heaven. Now picture this for a minute. <clears throat> 
He's only looking down. He looks down at the earth. He views it. Some think he thinks he views it through blood, the whole earth, or he'd destroy it. <clears throat> now I want you to place yourself just for a second. You're all alone. You're all by yourself. There's no one around you. <clears throat> You're all by yourself. You're all alone. You're on an island. All by yourself. No one's around. Nothing. You got that picture? God's in heaven. <clears throat> You're all alone. You're by yourself. <clears throat> You're on an island. You want to get off the island, you can't. You're all alone. God's not going to come down and physically move you. And then he sends you something. He sends this to you, the Bible. It floats up and you grab it. And you begin to see this is the only connection between you and God. This is my only connection between me and God. <clears throat> so now you have a Bible. You're, you're all alone. You're on an island. <clears throat> you start reading it. And you see all these scriptures, Genesis. You see where God created Adam. <clears throat> God creates Adam. Then a after Adam sins, God's there. And he cries out, Adam, where are you at? I was hiding. Can you hide from God? <clears throat> God's put us here on earth to govern it, regulate everything, <clears throat> right? <clears throat> Two thoughts on this. The first thought is God is not in charge over everything or God is in charge over everything first thought if God's in charge of everything he runs everything all you do is pray to find out what he's doing or he's given you the Bible the word and you have to use it in faith and make it happen David said this. He said, God, I have not hid, hid my sin from you. In other words, he confessed his sin before God. Can God see sin? Can he? <clears throat> you have the Bible. And we call it medicine, right? And it, the Bible's medicine. So, if you read it, it does something. Can it change things? Yes. Somebody say yes. <clears throat> right. What's changing it? Is God in the mix of it? Let's read Hebrews 4, 12 through 14. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. 13. 
Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight. Whose sight? God's. No, it didn't say God. Go back to verse 12. Go. <clears throat> For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and the joints and marrow and is a discerner in thoughts. And the intents of the heart. Verse 12, 13. Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight, but all things are naked and opened unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do. <clears throat> this is what judges you. This is what corrects you or judges you. Now listen. <clears throat> to get where you want to go in life, where we want to go, where you want to go personally with God, this will get you there. This, this is what God has given us between him and us. This is what he's given us. So to get active with him, to do what he's saying to do, you have to understand what he's saying. Right? <clears throat> so my first question is, is God involved with everything. The only time he's involved in it is if it comes from here. That's the only time he's involved with it. Most people believe that God is just directing their life all the way and it's just a, a, a jump and a skip and it says the footsteps of the righteous are ordered by God but the order, order, filled out order is here. It isn't in the sky somewhere. It's right here. This is the order of it. So if you want your footsteps directed by God, you have to know which way he's sending you. <clears throat> A lot of people believe you can only get that through prayer. Well, <clears throat> he's already sent what he sent us. And we can get direction from it. And some people have laid out before God and asked him for direction and prayed, just stayed there and asked God for direction and never got anything. Nothing. And their question is, am I hearing from God? Do I hear from God? Well, sure you hear from God. He's already given you everything that pertains to life. It's in your hand. <clears throat> so if God is not involved in the whole picture, think about this for a minute. That means everything that we need to do, want, or want to possess, or everything that is... Added in life has to come from here. It don't come from outer space. You following me? You, you are? What happened to the scripture? <clears throat> go, 13, 14, <clears throat> go. Seeing then that we have a great high priest. Now that that's is Jesus, <clears throat> which is passed into the heavens. Jesus, the son of God, let us hold fast to our... Right. <clears throat> Absolutely right. <clears throat> so my question is this. <clears throat> David cried. Now listen to me. Just, just listen. David cried, I have not hid my sin from you, God. Could you hide sin from God? Yeah, you can. Yes, you can. Where does the effect come in your physical body? The effect of sin hits the temple. You remember now, he sent blood. The blood covers the whole globe. And that, when he looks down, that's what he sees. He sees blood. Or he'd destroy it. So he sent his son so he, didn't, he, he wouldn't destroy it. <clears throat> so w without confession of your sin, it's there. It's not going anywhere. Lift your hands up for a minute. <clears throat> Why did you do that? I don't, you ain't reason you did it. You did it because I asked you to do it. You did it because I asked you to lift your hands up. It's the same with this. So God in heaven's looking down. Do you have to wait on him to say, lift your hands up? No, it's in scripture. He told you to lift your hands up. 
He said, lift your hands up and worship me and praise me. You're not doing it because uh, you're, you're, you're commanded by God. So he's saying, do this. You're doing it because it says in Scripture to do it. Lift your hands back up. <clears throat> Say, un this is a fact. Unconfessed sin, Unconfessed sin. will kill me. <clears throat> will kill me. <clears throat> That's right. Because God's not looking at it. He can't, he's not going to go confess that sin over there. That's between you and the Bible. That's between you and the Word of God. So he's not up in glory going, I'm going to beat you to death over this thing. David said it. You can read it in the book of Genesis. And she, done, she, she has a problem with this thought. So here's in Genesis... God's going around. Do you remember that was a powerful time? God says, Adam, where you at? What did he say? I hid. I was hiding. Why couldn't God see him? What? He can, he, God cannot see sin like that. He can't see sin like that. So then, like he just said, fig leaves, and then he sends Jesus to cover it. So anything that's not, you can walk in unconfessed sin all you want to walk, but it's going to kill you. You can cry out to God. God, you're going, God, what about this and this? Remember, you can't change sin with prayer. Prayer puts you in connection with God's direction and will, but sin is confessed. You don't do it with prayer. Not like that. <clears throat> what? <clears throat> there was no way to forgive him. How would he forgive him? There's no blood. It had to be a sacrifice. And that just covered, that just covered it. That's all it did. In the animal sacrifice, it just covered the sin. It didn't take it away. Christ's blood takes it away. <clears throat> Lift your hands up and receive this just for a moment. This is, this is a, prof I'm putting this together and I'm going, Lord, so anything that I do, <clears throat> you're not bringing it to me and saying, I'm going to beat you in hell with this. When I'm reading the scripture, I get a conviction of this. In my spirit, I get a conviction. And I go, whoa, if I want this to change, I'm going to have to confess this and do what this says. Now listen, <clears throat> some of you are going to choke this down. Some of you are going to go, I don't believe that way. It doesn't matter if you believe that way or not. It's God's order. <clears throat> in the Old Testament, which was not changed, in the Old Testament, he said, capital crime, capital punishment. Now, you get people in and they go, oh, we don't believe that way. You don't have to believe that way. You don't have to believe that way. It's what God said. So if you don't believe that way, murder's everywhere. From the same people that are killing people, murder is everywhere. Because we don't believe what God said. So we're crying out to God. God, change it. And God's saying, I can't change it. Change what? I've already told you how to regulate everything. I've already told you how to judge everything. I've already told you how to make things work right, and you won't do it. Now, you, you following me? <clears throat> You're getting it. <clears throat> Did you read 14? Okay, yep. Okay, good. Now, I want to um, I want to go to Hebrews 4, 3 for a minute. <clears throat> For we which have believed do enter into rest, as he said, as I have sworn in my wrath, if they shall <coughs> enter into my rest, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. And most people aren't resting in God. <clears throat> That's a whole different thing. <clears throat> but I want to just say this about this, because <clears throat> it's added in this. <clears throat> you cannot try to get Something from God. I know you're going you're gonna to go, you're going to throw something at me. <clears throat> I know you are. 
You cannot try to get something from God through prayer. I know that sounds weird. Don't that sound weird? Because <clears throat> I've always been taught in my head when I was little or up in the church <clears throat> where we came from that prayer, that's how you get from God. <clears throat> this is the way you get from God. That's the reason I'm telling you, God's in heaven looking down at earth going, when are they going to do what I told them to do so this over here will work right? God don't see sin. He's not looking at it. He can't see it. He can't have it in his presence. He doesn't see it. He saw sin in the beginning. He sends Jesus Christ down where he didn't see it. He, he destroyed it. <clears throat> he sends Christ down so now he can look through blood. <clears throat> it was different then. Now he looks through blood at it. And he sees us through blood. Those that don't confess sin to get saved. It's like God never knew them. They're going to hell. And then us, as a body, we have something in our life. We don't confess it. We keep walking with it. Let's hide it. Well, God's not seeing it. He's not going, get rid of this. Confess this. Do it. He's not doing that. That's where this comes from. And if you're not reading this, you're never going to ever know what to confess. You won't know. So then it has its effect on us. It's got this bounding, binding effect on us. <clears throat> and they kill you. <clears throat> uh, 6.12, Hebrews 6.12. That ye be not slothful, but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. <laughs> through faith, faith, and patience inherited the what God said, not praying for it to happen through faith they inherited it. 1035. <clears throat> Same book, 1035. <clears throat> 1035. <clears throat> 1035 or 25? 35. Cast not away, therefore, your confidence, which has great recompense of reward. Don't cast it away, your confidence in this. Lift your hands up for a minute. <clears throat> don't cast you, don't throw away your confidence in this. Because everything's happening, happening in your family. Remember, God's not, you have to go to them and tell them to confess. Jesus is Lord. Because God's not going to beat them in the head to get them to do it. <clears throat> He's not going to do it. So don't lose your uh, confidence in it. <clears throat> and that's what happens sometimes. We get <clears throat> slothful. So prayer, what is it? It's communication with God. Isn't it? <clears throat> sure it is. It's believing and receiving what Jesus already gave to us through the scriptures. So to see, that puts everything, everything in life, that puts it in this. It puts, it puts, it puts a demand on this. And so getting it from space, you got to get it from here. Lift your hands up. <clears throat> Say this with me. Say, for, instead of getting it from up there, <clears throat> I have to get it from right here. <clears throat> you can love the Spirit and only pray and never read and get an effect. But if you don't love the Word, and the Spirit, it's got a greater effect. <clears throat> it's true. Uh, did, you did 1035, right? <clears throat> you did? <clears throat> Stick with me, guys. <clears throat> Hebrews 4, 11 through 16. <clears throat> Let us labor, therefore, to enter into that rest, lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. For the what? word of... <clears throat> what is that? Read that again. Let us labor, therefore, to enter into that rest, lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. Now, just, she's going to finish these scriptures. Let this, just think about this for a minute. Hello? What'd you go there for? Because we're supposed to go through 16. No. I want you at Hebrews 4, 11 through 16. 
Thank you. <laughs> For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharp. I, I don't want to leave 11 yet. <laughs> go back to 11. <clears throat> yeah, go. Let us labor, therefore, to enter into that rest, lest any man fall after the same now example. Stop. Stay right there for a minute. <clears throat> Don't run off yet. <clears throat> Danny's gone, so I can't use here for the example, so I'll use you, Mikey. <clears throat> <clears throat> I see you in here praying, <clears throat> and I got a witness, boy, Matt, Mikey can pray. I seen him down here praying, walking around, man. You know, prayer moves mountains. I seen him praying, and he's just doing all these miraculous things, it seems like, in prayer. But I never see him doing anything. <clears throat> it's, so he's running around with all his communication with God, praying. <clears throat> well, I'm not going to fall because I'm not seeing you get an effect because you're not using this to get the effect. You're only running around praying. You follow me? You're only running around praying. Praying. Trying to get God to do something through this prayer. And he's going, you're communicating with me. I'm hearing you. I hear you. You're communicating. What are you trying to get me to do? <clears throat> so then you start giving these scriptures. You start calling these scriptures out. And then all of a sudden you got his attention. And then he says, okay, only do this. You don't have to keep throwing this in my face. Confess at one time the scripture and then lay it to the side. And don't bring it to my attention any longer. <clears throat> okay, now finished. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than what any is? two. The word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. So it, it's the word that does it, correct? Okay, you don't have to read the rest of that. We've already read that whole part. <clears throat> I want you to write this down here. I want you to go home and read this. What time? It's only 25 after. I want you to go home and read this right here. James 2, 14 through 24. <clears throat> this is the way I'm going to start doing this all the time. I'm going to, well, I've always done it. I don't think it's anything new. But I'm going to refresh in it. Because really, we are actors. And you got to act like it's already done. You know, that's hard to do. <clears throat> that's hard to do. Now, I'm not talking about prayer of agreement. I'm talking about praying to God on your own. This is hard to do, acting like it's already done. So, I want you to go to just one quick scripture in this. I want you to go to um, James chapter 2. I'm only going to get, she's going to read just a couple scriptures. And I want you to read from 14 to 24 when you get home. Re start with 14 and just read a couple of scriptures. What does it profit, my brethren, though a man say he has faith and has not works? Can faith save him? If a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food... And one of you say unto them, Depart in peace, be ye warmed and filled. Notwithstanding, you give them not those things which are needful to the body. What does it profit? That's it. Stop. <clears throat> this is just like, this is the way this is, is active. And this is what he's talking about. It's like saying to a person, Be filled and be warmed. Now, you can't apply that with everybody, brother. There's some people I won't do anything for. Nothing. <clears throat> but the 99% of the majority of it, I will. <clears throat> so someone comes up and you say, go in peace and be warm. What that is like is praying to God with nothing to back it. And you'll get nothing. That's exactly what it is. <clears throat> so it's... it's uh, <clears throat> I think God's trying to get us a little more active in this. <clears throat> ten, uh, Second Corinthians ten five. Second Corinthians ten five. 
casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. I want everybody just to think about this for a minute because <clears throat> some of your brains are going, <clears throat> I thought you got everything from prayer. <clears throat> you don't get everything from prayer. That makes the word null and void. If we can get the emphasis here, instead of praying a mist, it has a greater effect. The effect comes from this. Not a Holy Ghost accident. You ever heard that terminology? <clears throat> Anybody? Back when we were coming up in Bethel, they called it a Holy Ghost accident. We were praying and something accidentally happened. It just, something happened. We were praying for somebody to be healed, and it was a Holy Ghost accident, and it happened. It's never happened before. <clears throat> it just happened there when we was praying that night, and this person got healed. Instead of taking the word and confessing the word over them and believing that, no matter how long it takes, believing that, and we get the effect from that, and it wouldn't be a Holy Ghost accident. And this is a place where we've we got to control our minds because your mind runs wild. <clears throat> Because if we, you get empty and you're just, you're dry and you're empty, you're not going to get any, you're not going to make this thing do anything. It's not going to do anything if you don't know what to use and when to use it. Um, so that Hebrews, that Hebrews is so powerful, Jackie, <clears throat> that God's word is alive and it's active. And this, I want you to say this back with me. Say, this is what reads me. As I read it. <clears throat> right. God's not going to read you up in heaven. This is what reads you. That's the reason pe people stay dormant. They get saved and that's it. They're saved. They never go anywhere else. They're saved. And we know how, they know how to pray. But they go, that's it. They, they don't go any further. They're just dormant. <clears throat> well, I believe Jesus. I believe I believe in his name. I believe if I, if I pray to Jesus, see, that's the first mistake they make. You don't pray to Jesus. How many, how many people have ever heard, you've heard people do that all the time, praying to Jesus, and he's going, what? Why are you praying to me? I told you to pray to the Father and do it in my name, and I'll do it. Well, this is what I'm talking about. Calling out to the Father with this and believing that he's doing something. And this is the only proof that we have. So back to the island. You're on an island all by yourself. And this is the only proof of God's existence. Would you believe it or do you believe it? Lift your hands up for a minute. <clears throat> up over your head, both of you, all of you. <clears throat> The, it's the only proof we got. <clears throat> she got a, she got a, um, <clears throat> a word tonight to intercede. I'm not talking about interceding. I'm talking about prayer. She got a word to intercede for her family so she can break down, listen, break down principalities and spirits in high places so this can get through to them so they can hear it. That's what it's for, because without prayer, they can't hear it. Without intercession, they can't receive it. There's so many people that have that gift, that intercession, and they're so dormant because they don't believe this. That's the only, only way you can be dormant in intercession is, is because you don't believe this. You hear it. You know you got it. But you don't believe it. You don't have anything for truth that, that backs your belief. I believe in intercession. I believe to pray to God. And that's all you got. <clears throat> you don't know what he said. You don't know how to approach him. He said, those that worship me in the end time will worship me in spirit and in truth. With nothing else. No other proof. Let's stand and lift your hands up. I want to pray for a minute. <clears throat> so
So Lord, this is all we got to, uh, to prove that you exist. <clears throat> if we have any unconfessed sin in our life and we don't confess it, it'll kill us. It'll kill us dead. <clears throat> but this can change it. David, he said, God, I did not hide my sin. You can hide your sin all day long if you want to from God. Just hide it because you don't see it. But the effect of it is right here. The effect of sin is right on your physical body. <clears throat> and you're thinking, now you're thinking, well, Pastor Mark, what do I confess? I don't know. Go in Scripture and find out. Find out. Find out what is stopping you from going forward with God. The next step. Why, what is stopping me from jumping into the next step with God and going to that place I know exists? Because I've read it in Scripture. Place to hide. A place of rest. I know it's there. <clears throat> I want to reach it. I want to touch it. <clears throat> I want everybody with your hands lifted up to yourself. Confess your sin or unbelief to God. <clears throat> Remember, David did it. He said, I've not hid my sin. In other words, I brought my sin to you, God, even though you couldn't see it. I brought it to you and confessed it before you. Sons can get away with a lot. But your body pays for it. It'd be like getting in a car accident. <clears throat> and you got broke bones and you don't go to a hospital. Well, they're going to grow wrong. It's the same thing. <clears throat> hospital don't know you got in a car accident. Unless you go there, they don't know. You did that? <clears throat> now, before we go, I'm going to let you out. Before we go, here's what I want you to do. I want you to grab somebody by the hands and look them in the eyes. One-on-one, -on -one, look them dead in the eyes. <clears throat> and say, who the sun sets free, sun sets free. is free indeed. <clears throat> free indeed. Father, Father, I have not hid my sin from you. I I've confessed it. Confessed Therefore, it will, no it will no longer have an effect on the temple of the Holy Spirit. The temple of the Holy Spirit. You've sent your word to heal me. And by your stripes, I've been made whole. Jesus, mighty God. Okay, guys. <clears throat> I suggest you get a, <clears throat> if you can, get a CD and listen to this. Because you're going to think I'm saying things I didn't say. You need to get a CD and listen to it. <clears throat> Man, that water's good. <clears throat> <clears throat>